For years, America's return to the moon under NASA's Artemis program has been framed as a dangerous race with China. Both nations are working toward landing astronauts on the lunar surface before the end of the decade, with missions that could shape the balance of space leadership for decades to come. NASA has poured billions into its space launch system and Orion spacecraft, while partnering with commercial companies like SpaceX to handle the lunar landing system. It's an ambitious plan, but one that has faced delays, shifting budgets and constant investigation and pressure from experts and lawmakers. That pressure just grew stronger. In a recent Senate hearing on the nation's space priorities, a former NASA administrator, the very person who helped launch the Artemis program, delivered a blunt warning about America's chances of winning the moon race. His criticism pinpointed on SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander and its complex refueling plan, calling it risky and potentially the reason the U.S. could fall behind China. It didn't take long for Elon Musk to fire back with his own response, defending the strategy and laying out why he believes Starship is right on track. We're going to explain why this clash happened, what Musk said in response, and how it could reshape the path to the moon. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any updates. In early September 2025, the U.S. Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee gathered in Washington to set NASA's legislative priorities for the coming years. The focus was clear, outline a space strategy that would secure America's leadership in deep space exploration and counter China's growing presence beyond Earth. The hearing came at a critical moment. NASA still didn't have a permanent administrator in place, with Sean Duffy serving only in an acting role while the White House searched for a nominee. That leadership gap was already raising concerns inside the agency and among lawmakers. In a race where timelines are tight and delays are costly, the absence of a confirmed leader was seen as a major disadvantage. To help guide the discussion, lawmakers invited former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine to testify. Bridenstine had played a central role in shaping the Artemis program during his time at NASA, turning it from a political idea into a concrete plan to return humans to the moon. His experience included overseeing the development of the Space Launch System, the Orion Crew Capsule, and the first agreements with commercial partners for lunar missions. With that background, he was expected to provide valuable insight into where the program stands and what steps were needed to keep the U.S. ahead in the moon race. During the hearing, Bridenstine began by highlighting NASA's progress, especially with the SLS rocket. He acknowledged its history of cost overruns and delays, but emphasized that it was now operational and should be used to its fullest. The SLS had indeed been expensive, roughly $23.8 billion spent on development between 2011 and 2022. And each launch was estimated to cost between $2 and $4.1 billion. Still, Bridenstine framed it as a finished tool ready to deliver results. He also pointed to the Orion spacecraft, noting its reusability improvements over time, although total program costs for Orion were projected to reach about $40 billion by 2025. Those numbers reflect one of the biggest challenges in Artemis, cost. Between SLS, Orion, and supporting infrastructure, the program's total projected expense from 2012 to 2025 is around $93 billion. Much of that comes from large infrastructure projects like the mobile launcher platforms required for SLS. Mobile Launcher 2, for example, was originally budgeted at $383 million in 2019, but by 2025, its cost had ballooned to between $1.8 billion and $2.7 billion. These projects are essential for SLS missions, but have also been a source of repeated delays and budget strain. Against this backdrop of high costs and tight schedules, Artemis also depends on a key commercial component, SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System. Unlike SLS and Orion, which are government-built, Starship is a privately developed spacecraft designed to ferry astronauts from lunar orbit down to the moon's surface and back. It's a central part of NASA's plan for Artemis III, the first crewed lunar landing of the program. The mission's success hinges not just on Starship itself, but on the complex process of orbital refueling that will allow it to complete the journey. 
When the hearing turned to SpaceX's role in Artemis, Bridenstine's tone became sharper. He pinpointed on the human landing system and its reliance on orbital cryogenic refueling, a method that has never been done at the required scale. Under NASA's current plan, Starship HLS would launch into low Earth orbit and wait to be fueled by multiple tanker starships, each delivering liquid oxygen and methane to an orbital depot, before transferring it to the crewed lander. NASA's internal estimates have ranged from 10 to 20 launches to complete the process, all within a narrow launch window. Bridenstine warned that any delay in this chain, from weather, technical issues, or pad availability, could push Artemis III off schedule. He compared this complexity to China's approach, which uses a simpler two-launch profile with no large-scale orbital refueling. By choosing a more intricate plan, Bridenstine argued, the U.S. was adding dozens of potential failure points to its timeline. He stressed that NASA has never attempted massive cryogenic transfers in space, and managing the fluid behavior, boil-off, and thermal stability in microgravity remains an unproven challenge. In his view, betting the program's first crewed lunar landing in over 50 years on a first-of-its-kind system was a strategic risk that could give China an opening to land first. The message was clear. Artemis III is more than just a mission. It's a demonstration of U.S. leadership in space. Bridenstein believed a simpler backup lander should have been developed in parallel. But with Starship locked in as NASA's choice, the success of the program now depended on SpaceX's ability to master orbital refueling quickly. His comments directly questioned the readiness of Musk's flagship project and set the stage for a public response that would challenge those doubts head on. Bridenstine's testimony quickly made headlines in the space industry. His concerns touched on one of the most sensitive points in Artemis, whether Starship's orbital refueling could be ready in time. For SpaceX, this wasn't just about defending a single mission. It was about defending the credibility of the entire Starship program. Musk has long described Starship as the backbone of future lunar and Mars missions, and the refueling process Bridenstine questioned is central to that vision. Any doubt about its feasibility risked fueling political pushback, shifting budgets, or even prompting calls to consider alternative landers. Musk didn't let the criticism go unanswered. Within days of the hearing, he publicly addressed the concerns, starting with the core point. SpaceX is already preparing to conduct multiple orbital refueling tests in 2026 using Starship version 3. He explained that docking two Starships together is actually easier than docking with the International Space Station, something SpaceX has performed successfully 27 times since 2019, including 10 fully autonomous dockings. With both vehicles built by the same company, using the same systems, and operating in the same low-Earth orbit, alignment and connection are simpler than the complex multi-agency docking protocols required for the ISS. Musk also reminded critics that SpaceX had already taken a major step toward proving in-space cryogenic transfer. During Starship's Integrated Flight Test 3 on March 14, 2024, the company successfully moved about 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between tanks in microgravity. The test, conducted under a $53.2 million NASA contract for on-orbit cryogenic fluid management, collected valuable data on fluid behavior, slosh dynamics, and boil-off. Both NASA and SpaceX labeled the test a success. On the question of how many launches would be needed, Musk countered the 20-launch scenario Bridenstine mentioned with new performance data. Starship version 3, at 124.4 meters tall, can carry roughly 150 tons of propellant to orbit in reusable mode. With an orbital depot in place, fully fueling the human landing system for a moon mission would require closer to 10 to 12 launches, possibly fewer if tanker capacity is increased. Musk revealed that Starship version 4, already in development, would boost capacity enough to cut the requirement to as few as five tanker flights, a timeline far more manageable than critics suggest. By laying out these points, Musk wasn't just answering Bridenstine. He was signaling to NASA, Congress, and the public that Starship's path to lunar readiness is not only possible, but already well underway.